Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about the top 5 tips for late game and for Imperial Age in Age of Empires 2. Also I'll be talking a little bit lower because it's late and I don't want to bother the neighbors. Before I get started though, make sure to check out my secondary channel, Harry Gameplay. Just go there if you want to see high level 1v1s and whatnot. Daily vids there, it's all the good stuff. We broke 10k subs, go check that out. Thank you all for supporting it. Let's hop into the list. All right, starting things off at number five, we're gonna be talking about controlling the map. This is such an important tip, but as always, I'm not gonna just tell you what it is. I'm gonna tell you how to actually do it. So first thing you have to consider is that Imperial Age armies are really powerful. This means that hill bonus matters very, 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 very much. Think of it this way. In Feudal Age, the Archer has four attack. If you add hill bonus to that, okay, 25% more damage, did yield five attack. It's a pretty significant jump. It's still pretty considerable, but it's not huge. In Imperial Age, stuff like Mangadai has 12 attack. Arbalest has 10 attack. So not only are you getting like plus one damage from the hill bonus, you're usually getting plus two at least, but usually around like plus three or plus four for your castles and your army. And so the hill bonus is extremely crucial at just multiplying the amount of damage you're dishing out. And for that reason, putting castles around important hills both defensively, in the middle of the map, and offensively will help you so much in both 1v1s and team games. But controlling a hill doesn't just mean putting a castle on it. You can put castles, but also keep armies around hills, especially the ones where your enemy wants to overcome if he wants to push you. Try to always fight when you're on top of a hill and your opponent coming at you. It's really important to get that hill bonus as much as possible for these little and big engagements. You can also, if you can't afford castles, just put buildings, your production buildings on hills so that if your opponent wants to control the hill, they have to first kill your buildings. This is a really good and secret tip. No one really knows about this. No one really does it. But if you put any building on a hill, your opponent will automatically be scared to just jump on it. And it would take him at least one minute to clear your buildings and put his castle. So that one minute could help alert you to which hill he's going for. And you can then rotate over and try to stop him from getting a crucial hill. So castle is ideal. But if you can't afford that, just put some production buildings and try to control the hills and fight on top of them whenever you can. All right, moving on to tip number four, we've got the defending your economy in both 1v1s and team games. Now in late game, raiding is a huge factor. Everyone would love to just send some military in, kill villagers, disrupt the economy, and force your opponent to run back with its army to go ahead and stop the raids from completely wiping your opponent's economy, or your economy in this case. Well, I have a secret for you guys, fortunately. The best way to defend raids is literally just to put castles and town centers in your base. This is so strong because in a natural game you usually have like three or four town centers if you just add two or three castles in your base and you combine this with getting ballistics fletching bodkin and bracer with like chemistry to make your castles and your town centers do more damage your opponent will lose army every time he runs into raid so this won't nullify raiding entirely your opponent can still run in kill some vills and whatnot to disturb your economy but we force him to lose army and if we have our castles and our town centers there we don't always have to send our army back so that allows us to push with our army or just raid him back and if he's not doing the same he's gonna have a lot more problems than we're doing this is by far the best and most effective way to defend raids in 1v1s and the same applies in team games especially if you're the flank player because the archer player always gets ballistics and chemistry with all the archer attack upgrades naturally and so your defenses are very strong at stopping raids by default and yeah just a little bonus tip if it wasn't clear already even if you're a cavalry sieve make sure you are getting ballistics and chemistry eventually and archer attack upgrades up to bracer it's it's worth it even if you're not making a single range unit it's worth it in the late game just for those buildings so obviously prioritize upgrades for your army first your cavalry or whatnot but then always get those upgrades eventually it'll make your life so much easier the last thing i'll mention for this tip as well is that stonewalling the sides of the map can be great at restricting the raids and forcing your opponent to come in only down the middle where you can see him coming if you can stonewall the full map then obviously that is ideal stonewalling the full map and making a few gates is great especially in team games it really prevents raids at coming into your trade route which is super important in those long team games but even for 1v1 stonewalling the whole map and preventing him from actually raiding your villagers is a pretty big advantage that being said it's a lot harder to do this than it sounds or it sounds pretty easy to stonewall the whole map forehead but it's a lot harder to do that because if your opponent sees you doing it he can just kill your walling bills and even if you do manage to do this he can easily break in on one side with petards or siege ram pretty quickly and then you're pretty much wide open and exposed to raids so i prefer to just keep the castles and the town centers in your base it's a much more consistent way of playing. 
All right, moving on to number three, it's about gold. Gold control is super important because the resource is scarce in the late game. It's the second resource to run out pretty much. It's first stone, then gold usually. And so the big idea with gold is that you have to just plan for a long-term solution. Either you expand to the side golds and take those extra resources. In team games, it's usually in the middle of the map where you'll find most of the extra gold, 1v1s off to the sides usually. Or you can go ahead and get relics. And in team games, you don't really need relics because you have trade. But for 1v1s, it's relics or the extra golds on the side and securing gold for late game is absolutely massive because not only do you use that gold for your army you use it for siege and you can't make a single siege unit that only costs food it always costs some form of gold and without siege it's very hard to push castles so having a long-term plan for that gold is pretty important also guilds from the market can be good but that upgrade takes forever to pay off so only get it if you have no other way to get gold Moving on to number two, it's also talking about gold management, but with a different frame of thought. This is going to be when gold is running low and you have very limited gold to spend, what should you prioritize? My recommendation is that you prioritize technologies. This is true in late game for any resource, but especially gold, because that tends to run out a little bit more quickly. But if you prioritize technologies, especially for your trash units, you're going to have a lot more value from that gold spent than if you would just spend it on gold units. Listen, gold units are great, but as soon as you run out of gold, even if you have really strong gold units you can't make that many of them and so they're not very useful however if you get the halberdier upgrade that costs 600 gold you now have a very strong trash unit it's a much bigger upgrade from like where, what the pikeman stats are to the halberdier and now that halberdier costs no gold to make so you can just continue making a much stronger unit with food and wood and that gold is just a one-time payment so in general whenever gold is running low try to prioritize getting upgrades on your units because that's going to get you a lot more value i'll give you one more example to really make sure this hits home you can make 10 paladin with some gold or you can get the hussar upgrade what's better 10 paladins in the short term and that's all the gold you have or the hussar upgrade that can get you a lot of value if you make 500 hussars over the course of the game that's 15 extra hp and some hidden stats on all your like have and 15 times 500 is a lot of stats that would just give you a huge boost throughout that entire game and so if you think of it this way you'll quickly realize that picking up the important technologies before your gold runs out helps set you up to play that trash war like the pros all right, moving on to number one. This is by far the best thing that you can go away from this video with. So try to pay attention to this one because it's really important. And this is to figure out your win condition. At the end of the day, you just want to win the game. Who cares if you've got 10K gold or however much gold is that you possibly want in the late game you set up the map perfectly if you don't actually know how you want to win the game it's going to take you a lot longer to do that and you're going to throw a lot of your games and so i have the special secret when it comes to figuring out your win condition and this revolves around the gold that you have available it goes like this if you've got no relics you spend all your gold as fast as possible and you'll have to end the game as fast as possible no questions about it you don't try to set up the trash game if your opponent has five relics you're never going to beat him in the late game so just go for the kill as soon as as possible to do this use the golds on the sides gold stone and then buy into as many expensive units as possible double gold comps heavy siege castle forward and look to end the game if you can't end the game and your gold runs out so be it you're gonna lose anyways and if you end the game before the gold runs out that's cool your opponent has relics doesn't matter because you still have the gold and you're completely fine and then the flip side if you have the relics you want to do the exact opposite you want to trade with your opponent constantly force him to fight constantly trade gold versus gold constantly try to snipe his siege raid him a little bit just to make the game messy and to stall it out because as soon as he runs out of gold he won't be able to field siege easily he's gonna have to sell at the market make one or two siege units and because you have the five relics you're going to be easily able to just have your own siege to defend or to just snipe his siege and force him to start up from scratch and he's not going to be able to really break you once he runs out of gold and there's no relics to back him up so in these extreme cases when you have either all the relics or like four to one relics or the opposite side if you don't have the relics that's the way you want to play in either case and so if you have that in mind it's going to make it a lot easier for you to find your win condition amidst those really crazy games all right that's gonna be it for this video guys i hope you guys enjoyed and benefited from it and as always if you enjoyed it leave a like comment and subscribe it helps me out greatly and it's free for you guys thanks for watching see you guys next time peace